Look at me coming into your house or your subway car and telling you what's up. Particles are waves. De Broglie says so and confirmed by Davison and Germer. So you're gonna have to deal with this. Some of the nasty consequences of the fact that stuff is actually wiggling around is this. Here's one of the, here's one nasty consequence. I will give you a double slit experiment and I will send in, that's the wall and here's a screen over here and I'm going to, oh, this has to be a long way away. I'm going to send in a stream of electrons, but I'm not gonna send in a lot of electrons. I'm gonna send them in freaking one at a time. Watch this, here come my electrons, and the electrons are spit at this wall like this, and most don't make it through, but some do. And so the electron, well, if they're going through one at a time, this is a little bit annoying, but an electron either goes through this slit or it goes through that slit, and then the electrons appear on here. I probably have some photographs film or something. Let's say that I have photographic film and the photographic film reacts every time an electron hits it. It's kind of like a phosphor sort of, but an image of where the electron hit appears. And so what I can do is I can set up this experiment. I can run it for, I don't know, a hundred electrons or something. And if I take that out and then look at it, then I will see a pattern like this on my film. I will see a random distribution of dots, apparently random, but actually not random, because you never know where the electrons are gonna go, because there's some bending as they go through here, you don't know exactly what's up, but the electrons splatter themselves like this. And that's after a short time, or should I say small number, small number of electrons. If you come back a little bit later, I mean, set up a new, get a new plate of film, we don't wanna be screwing this up, right? And you let it happen for a longer time. You got electron coming through, another electron coming through, another electron coming through. Now the cool thing is, you've got this in a box and you don't know which slit the electron's going through. It's just going through one of the slits. If it makes it onto the film, it has to have gone through one of the slits, right? That's logical, consistent, and reasonable. Good luck with that, quantum's in the room. Now what's gonna happen next is is you're starting to see, as you take this out a little bit later, you're starting to see an interesting thing happening. You, you take it out a little bit later, and there are some places where it looks like there are more dots, and some places where it looks like there are fewer dots. And the startling thing is here, this is more time, and more electrons. The startling thing is that looks like a diffraction pattern. It looks like here, here, here are turning out to be bright fringes, and it looks like in the middle there, we're getting some cancellation of what? I don't know. We're sending electrons through here one at a time. We know the current over here, so we know that only one electron can get through at a time, and what the heck? What the heck? Let's wait a little bit longer so we can really dramatize this. Uh, long time, and tons of electrons. Here we go, we in fact get an extremely dense region right here where there is an enormous number of electrons, an enormous number of electrons here. And the beautiful thing about it is we don't get any electrons right in the middle. They are coming in randomly, it seems like, early on, but the more and more you do it, the more strongly we define these bright fringes and these dark fringes, and it happens over a long pattern. This is exactly like light, but I want to tell you the electrons are coming through one at a freaking time. So what I'm saying is, I mean, this was enough trouble when the waves were doing it, when a single wave would interfere with itself through a single slit. These are electrons. These are little packets of things, and I don't care if you're sending through electrons or neutrons or tricycles, if they're all the same type of tricycle. If you're throwing them through these holes and you don't know which one they went through, they're going through both. Sorry, I'm gonna tell you that one more time. An electron, one at a time, sent through a two-slit experiment actually goes through both slits at the same time. It knows that the other slit is there. 
You can't say it went through this slit because then you wouldn't get diffraction. You wouldn't get cancellation. There's nothing else happening. It's a single electron going through. And I've done that experiment billions of times, maybe even just thousands of times, and I begin to see this pattern right here. But they know the existence of both slits. They go through both slits in a strange, probabilistic manner. And quantum mechanics is very, very strange. Somehow, this physical thing is able to go through both of them at the same time and then interfere with itself, having gone through both of them. It is now waving through both of them and determining the probabilistic chance of hitting on one of the bright fringes and completely eliminating hitting on any of the dark fringes right here. Those are eliminated because the electrons interfere with each other. One at a time, man! One at a time!